and they're just like playing with each other. That came out kind of wrong. Y'all already know I have a problem. Let's see what my problem is. I am about to watch the first prom for the amazing readathon. It is currently May 31st, almost 1.45 p.m. Eastern. So here we go. So it looks like it has to be a book that you did not purchase. So things like subscriptions that you pay for, such as Everand, Audible, KU, etc., do not count for this prompt. But you can use things like a book that was gifted to you, an ARP, so something like off NetGalley, a library book, using Libby, Hoopla, Little Free Library, stuff your Kindle Day books, Libro FM, advanced listener copies, influencer books, anything that you did not personally spend money on. Take prices. If you take the plane, it doubles your page count and you get 700 GRC. If you take the train, you only get to count for the normal page count and it's 450 GRC. And then if you decide to walk there, you divide the page count in half, but it's free. I'm going to have to peruse my shelves. I've got an internet crush. She's not a celebrity, but she's taken. So can't I fall in love? Can't take the hint and give up. I totally just stopped what I was doing. I was totally working. I went to go watch the video and pick out my first book for the Amazing Readathon. I'm between two. I was gifted this copy of A Love Song for Ricky Wilde by Tia Williams. This was from Leandra. I did put this in my pile of possibilities for a bonus prom from a third person perspective, but it could totally count. And what's nice about this book is that since it is large print, large print. This does have more pages to it. If you take out the acknowledgments, 451 pages. The other book that I'm thinking about is Love Redesigned by Lauren Asher. I happened to buy a book when I was at the airport. The clerk put a bookmark in the book that I bought. If you buy a book, you get a free book, like Bloom will send you a free book. So they sent me this free book. I'm not sure which one to start off with. I'm looking forward to both. I don't know. I don't know. I'm gonna just do like an Instagram poll and see what people choose. My mama told me don't talk to people you haven't met. I guess my mama was right. But it's not cause everybody you meet is dangerous Fact cause they'll break your heart Cause she plays it so cool Making up her own rules And I'm a loser for thinking I've got Any shot in the dark Now it's hitting me hard Tell me why Good morning! Was... Happy June 1st! This is so exciting! I put up a poll yesterday, May 31st, because the first prompt was dropped. I was between two books. So it was between A Love Song for Ricky Wilde or Love Redesigned. And if you haven't seen my Instagram story already, Love Redesigned won. This is a bit of a bigger book. Since it is such a big book, I am going to end up flying, which gives me double the page count, but it does cost a little bit more of the GRC, which is the currency for the Amazing Readathon. I think this is a good strategy of like big book, double the points, and then this is also a romance. I don't think it'll count for LGBTQ author or a host favorite. I didn't see it on the list. This book is 528 pages and this should get me 1,106 points because I doubled it and then for your team genre it's another 50 points. So I was like I'm coming in as a hard hitter. Here we go. Amazing Readathon book number one and as I had mentioned before this was a copy from Bloom. They had gifted me this copy so it's completely free to me. So it'll be very exciting to give Lauren Asher another try because I have not historically liked a couple of her books but I hear that this series is a lot better. Let me read what this book's about in case you don't know. So it's between Julian and Dahlia. So for Julian, it says, If I ever caught on fire, Dahlia Munoz would fan the flames with a smile. So when she returns to Lake Wisteria, I fully intend to avoid the interior designer. 
at least until my meddling mother exploits my savior complex. The faster I help Dahlia find her creative spark, the sooner she will leave town. But while I was busy getting rid of Dahlia, I overlooked one potential issue. What happens if I want her to stay? For Dahlia, it says, people say the devil has many faces, but I only know one. Julian Lopez, my childhood rival and family friend of me. I vowed to steer clear of him while recovering from my broken engagement, but then the billionaire makes an irresistible offer. Renovate a historic house together and triple our profits. Our temporary truce becomes compromised as we face years worth of denied attraction and mixed emotions. Giving into our desire is inevitable, but falling in love, that isn't part of the plan. Let's get into it. Just getting into this book and as I was opening the first couple of pages, I saw that there's these cool playlists. There's playlists for fuck love songs, stressed and depressed, get hammered. I love this. This is great. It was already starting off better, Lauren Asher. And then the dedication to those whose love language is words of affirmation, which honestly, that might be one of my biggest ones. Your praise kink is safe with me and Julian Lopez. Are we getting a little spicier here? And there is a content warning list. So people who said that I may like this Lauren Asher book a little bit better, you might be right. So I'm really hoping that this is a good one. I also just noticed if anybody in the future is looking for footnotes, first page. That's considered a footnote um, because it also is it's throughout the book too where he, I guess he speaks Spanish. So it's just kind of like saying what it means. So calmate is uh, calm down in Spanish. And then there's like perdón is pardon. But it has a bunch, I think it's between two Spanish speaking individuals. So that's cool. But okay, let me actually get into reading now. I should also add, it's like 4 a.m. and I have no right to be this crazy energized. So happy, happy June, everybody. Happy, amazing readathon. It has been the longest day or what feels like the longest day ever. I have been working like all day. So now I'm going to finally unwind before dinner and I'm gonna read Cat and Gamer. I did start this a couple days ago, but I didn't get very far. I may just start over, but this is going to be able to count for a 400 point prompt for sightseeing. I haven't hit the second leg yet, so I'm still in the clear and I can finish this with no problem. So this is a book involving a game. This would work perfectly. So I'm really just trying to get rid of all of these library books so that they can stop asking me for their books back and telling me I'm overdue. Okay, so after I read Cat and Gamer, I'm probably going to read If You'll Have Me. This is by Uni. And I am going to con consider this a 300 point prompt book for a BIPOC author because the author is a Korean American person. Also, it's it's romance, so it'll get me 350 points. I have two goals tonight and that includes reading these two books. a bonus scene it's like this cat is like it's almost like he has ADHD but he's like I can't get separated from mom I know I'll focus on my brother's flippy tail a flawless plan he's just focusing on 
just focusing on his brother's tail. And then what do you know? He gets sidetracked by like a butterfly. That's so freaking cute. This book is this book is adorable. Cat and Gamer is so cute. So the little chapter that I just read was basically, I'm understanding now that it is like in her perspective and then the cat's perspective. The girl is like playing her video game and the cat, if you've had a pet before, you know that they do things that they don't mean to do, they just do it. So the cat has its paw like resting on the power button of the game console that she's playing and she happened to get one of the like rare items with a 2% drop rate and the cat steps on the power button before she could save it. And from the cat's perspective, the cat's just like, oh, this is, what is this game? This, this thing that the person's playing? Like, oh, and there's this really warm box. I'm gonna sit on it. Not knowing that it's the console. So the next day she puts the console vertical and the cat's like, what? It's standing. <laughs> She doesn't know how to have any fun. It's really cute. It's definitely worth picking up and it reads very quickly like in a matter of 10 minutes I've read probably a third of the book. So easy points here for the amazing readathon. Okay, I've had dinner and I just finished Cat and Gamer. So cute. I can't wait to pick up the rest in the series. I am about to start If You'll Have Me by Uni and I was doing a little bit of research to see if I could get any more points other than just the romance aspect. I noticed that the book is about two females falling in love. And so I was like, oh, I wonder if maybe the author is LGBTQ. Googled uni LGBTQ author. Not only is she a BIPOC author, she is also a lesbian illustrator. So I was like, perfect. So I'm very excited to get into this book and just continue with some self-care for today. So, If You'll Have Me by Uni was also a channel member pick by Bookish Lattes or Anthea. And I don't have my um, channel memberships anymore just because I decided it was like less pressure for me. So, this is my little shout out to you, Anthea. Thank you for recommending this book for me. It's Tuesday, June 4th, and <laughs> ignore the dewiness. I'm hot. I've had the longest day. I left for work at 8 a.m. and I had my first patient at 10. Then I had testing from 11 to 2.30 and then another testing from 2.30 until 6.30. And then I had to clean up my office and like, you know, have a minute to myself before I could drive home, which was another 15 minutes. And then I swept the garage because that was my plan for today since my partner went to go to like a card tournament. He likes to play Yu-Gi-Oh on like Tuesdays. So anyways, I came home to a lovely surprise that I want to share with you guys. My book of the month box. I'm going to show you guys what I got. The first thing I got is is volume zero. Um, this is actually kind of cool. I didn't know what to expect, but Brie sold me on it. Like she, Brie as in the book driver, she sold me on this. It's a bunch of, I guess like short stories, a short story collection of sorts. And I was like, okay, this sounds like a fun time. And you know what? This is probably gonna look really cool on my shelves. I got this. I don't remember which one I picked for my main pick, but I think it was this one. I think I picked Honey by Isabel Anta. And there's actually some like junk on my book, which is annoying, but this cover is freaking gorgeous. Oh, I love the back with the sparkles and stuff that they did. Okay, this book is so pretty. I'm just gonna read the brief blurb. I'm not gonna read the whole synopsis, but it's an addictive coming of age story that follows the meteoric rise of pop star Amber Young as she navigates fame and self-discovery in the late 90s and early 2000s. So it sounds very much like the music that I grew up with. And <laughs> this is just so cute. There was another June book that I ended up picking up as well, but I think it was just like an add-on for me. 
because Honey was my main pick, but I got Margot's Got Money Troubles by Rufy Thorpe. I got it because the cover. The cover is so cute. It's got that like kind of comic book kind of vibe to it, if you can see that. But this one is a bold, laugh out loud, funny, and heartwarming story about one young woman's attempt to navigate adulthood, new motherhood, and her meager bank account in our increasingly online world. And then it says, as the child of a Hooters waitress and an ex-pro wrestler, I'm probably gonna have a lot of fun reading this book. So two books that I probably normally wouldn't have gravitated towards. And because I love Miss Catherine Center, I had to pick up the rom-commers. I already have a couple of other books from her, if you can see them on my shelves back there. But I did get an advanced, advanced early copy of this book. I liked it, so I was like, well, I'm just gonna get the, the hardcover as well. If you know nothing about this one, it is a love story between this girl who writes romantic comedies and she like obsesses over them and she essentially falls in love with the screenwriter who sucks at writing rom-coms. So they kind of like team up. It's a little standoffish at first, I will say that but eventually they they have a lot of fun together. It's very reminiscent, like not the actual story itself, but the vibes of the two characters, Betrayed by Emily Henry. Like the banter between the two where they may not initially like each other at first, but then like they kind of grow on each other and they work together. The last book that I was dying to read, like I, I'm very excited. I may just finish up role playing like ASAP and then start. Leather and Lark, as I loved Butcher and Blackbird. So this one will probably work for a book with a weapon on the cover as the sightseeing prompt once I finish role playing for my city prompt. But if you don't know, this is the second book in the Ruinous Love Trilogy. It is another enemies to lovers dark romantic comedy packed with danger, chaos, and heat. It is also a dual POV. I don't know, I'm like so torn because I have a couple of books that I wanna like read next. So obviously this one, and then I'm, I wanna continue with Powerless. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not hearing great things about this one, but I still want to read it and I just ah, the choices, but I guess you'll see whenever I uh, get around to it. And last night, so this would be the third, Brie dropped in the middle of her sprints. The next leg, which is us going to Buenos Aires. The prompt was to read a book with a dual POV and it had to have exactly two. POVs. So Team Romance just kind of unintentionally made a team buddy read. So we're reading role playing. And this one's really cute so far. I'm only on like chapter seven, which is about 50 pages in. But so far we have Maggie here. She's a 48 year old mom. And then we have Aiden here, who is a 50 year old guy. So we're just kind of like getting a little snippet into where they're at in their lives right now. Like Maggie's son just went off to college and he kind of like makes a bet with her to like start hanging out with some people because she's now an empty nester. And apparently she was like divorced I don't know, five years ago or something. Eventually she joins this online guild where she meets Aiden, but she doesn't know it's him at first because obviously they're like online and they're just like playing with each other. That came out kind of wrong. But um, they're like playing online with each other. Like there's this game. Her like username is Bogwitch and his name is Otter, I believe. Right now we're just kind of getting introduced to them setting up. It, no romantic sparks have happened yet. They haven't met each other in real life yet. So very early on still, but I'm liking it a lot so far. It's got really good potential. So given that I'm like only this far through, I really need to get the ball rolling tonight. It is like eight o'clock. So let's see how far I can get. I am currently hanging out on Brittany's stream right now where she's doing BNK book club with Kelsey. So we've got a little bit of time. I'm ready to just unwind from my long, long work day. I normally do not work this much in one day. It's a lot, but I had people reschedule from last week. So I'm gonna continue on with this. I'm gonna be listening to this while I kind of like unpack my bag and get in some comfy clothes and put my books away and catalog them, all that stuff. I like to put them in my Goodreads physical TBR shelves so that way I know what I have in case I'm out at a bookstore and I'm like, do I have this book? <laughs> I will uh, get to reading. Oh, oh, wait, oh, wait. I forgot. Book of the month does a bookmark, and mine was at the bottom. It's kind of bent. These are a little different. These are these are like thinner. So we have a thinner bookmark. They're usually kind of like shorter and wider. But this one says hold that plot, and it's at the top. So that way, like you put it inside your book. Oh my God, how cute! That is adorable. I like that a lot more actually. And thank you, Book of the Month, for letting me know I've got great taste. I know, I know. Okay. Um, we'll see you guys. 
later. So it's now June 5th. I'm trucking along in role playing. I'm about 45% of the way through, but they finally did just meet. Not at 45%, but a little earlier than that. I was listening this morning and they did finally meet and it's really cute because, you know, she thought he was like this young 20 year old guy and he's over here thinking she's like this 80 year old woman. And I just kind of thought it was a little too soon for them to meet because they didn't really get to know each other. I have met people online before that I like used to play video games with. I probably was talking to them for at least a year or two before I actually met them in person. I mean, I know they're local and everything, but I don't know, it moved a little fast, but maybe like when you're not in your 20s, cause that's when I was in my 20s, that's like when I did stuff. I was little more cautious but like when you're not 20 you just go balls to the wall I don't know it's not as like oh my god amazing as other people have been making it out to be I like it a lot I don't think it's gonna be a five star for me so I've got this that I'm just gonna try to work on today hopefully Brie will not drop another prompt and I've got like a bunch of work again today it's crazy busy right now so I'll check in with you guys later <laughs> sixth I think I'm very tired it's like 5 a.m. last night I was reading if you'll have me by uni and I got like maybe 30% through the book and then I got really distracted on sprints I think it was like Mar Margaret to Zoe sprints anyways and then I stayed up until probably like 10 p.m. or so I wanted to read something before bed like as I was getting ready for bed, but I knew I didn't have a lot of time to read. Just because I like to go to bed when my partner goes to bed. Because we get to like cuddle and stuff and all that, all that fun stuff, you know. Oxytocin. So I picked up a rather short book. This is a horror. It's called Sugarcane by Cassandra Celia. I think this is an author that also lives in Maryland. She's a Maryland bookseller. So this one is basically about a husband and wife. The husband, you know, they, they've had like a good relationship, but the husband does some shady shit and the wife covers up for him, but he doesn't know that she does that. And so eventually one day she finds herself tied up in their basement. So I don't know. I, I'm here for this. <laughs> I needed a little like romance palette cleanser. So I'm only six pages in. I put some ambiance on. It's just like dark and stormy ambiance. Speaking of storms, last night in my area, there are multiple tornadoes and that doesn't really happen for Maryland like that frequently, but they actually touched down and someone's house got like totally trashed. But yeah, one of the tornadoes was actually a quarter of a mile from my house. And as I was looking outside, I was like, these clouds look so weird. Like I've never seen clouds this dark i just had never seen clouds that dark before and like the lightning would like flash and then all of a sudden like immediately thunder would happen and i, I was like holy crap it must be really close it was kind of scary but we're okay nothing happened to us fortunately i hope the other people are okay i'm gonna get up into a dark time this morning <laughs> and read this and then i'll probably switch back over to if you'll have me by uni finish them off I'm gonna like save all my ratings for the end of the video. If you just wanna know my ratings, just skip to the end. I hope you stick around, but I will uh, let you know what happens the rest of today. Oh yeah, last night we dropped a detour. This time the detour was to take a picture of your like favorite local indie bookstore or library. The one before that was like posting a picture of your pet with your current read so i ran downstairs that day and like i'm gonna get my 200 points and i took a picture of daisy with i was starting role playing that day so those are those are fun little things to do to earn you know extra 200 points but i'm gonna do some sightseeing now before the next leg drops i don't remember where i'm gonna put this one um on the sightseeing prompts just yet but for if you'll have me i put it under i want to see the 300 point prompt for a bipoc author because this is a korean american illustrator and then i'm gonna get 50 extra points for it being a LGBTQ author because the author identifies as lesbian and then it's a romance so another 50 points so 400 total but 
Hopefully you'll see me when I'm a little bit more awake. Also working on a spreadsheet for all the authors going to Monster Erotica Con because my goal will be to read at least one book by each author going. So we have lots of fun people. Um, one of my most anticipated people to see, or couple I suppose, because there's a lot of fun people going. Where are they? Tiffany Roberts. They're also going to be at a Polygon. So I'm very excited. I love the way you take it slow. You make this light inside me glow. Today's Saturday, June 8th. Yesterday, so this is Friday. Brie dropped the next leg, so we are going to Berlin. We need to read a book with movement in the title. Heather and Izzy put together a little list of books that would work for this prompt, and When the Moon Hatched was on that list. It's a big book. I believe it's like 690 pages, and that's not even including some of the extra stuff, because there is stuff at the beginning that I was reading as well. It had to do with the characters and common terms throughout this book like there's a glossary so I think Goodreads has it listed as 718 pages I'm actually gonna go with that just because there is extra stuff that's not listed as pages in the book but it's definitely stuff I've read so I feel like it should count I am currently about a third of the way through maybe almost 40 percent through because I haven't updated my spot physically because I've also been listening to it I've been working on my diamond painting I did just run downstairs so I'm a little out of breath but I ran downstairs and I had gotten a couple packages in one of them I ordered a monitor like another computer monitor when I opened the box there was two so I was like did I really order two of these <laughs> so I was like oh if that's the case I'll just like use the other one at work and have them reimburse me but I also got like another little package y'all already know i have a problem let's see what my problem is so we're gonna see what i got because i don't remember what i got the book for classic literature is ensnared by tiffany roberts and i thought it would be good to get this anyway i'm going to meet them at monster erotica con next year and possibly if i get into poly con i will get to meet them there as well opal rain's also going to be at monster erotica con and i have been wanting to read this book there's actually a little plushie someone made a little plushie of this and i was like how cute obviously this is not really cute but i hear really good things about this book so i might be reading this this month for the readathon because it's a chunker it's, it's a little over 500 pages and i believe it's a romance so heck yeah okay next book i got is glow of the ever flame by pen cole we're gonna be interviewing pen cole next month and i want to read all of her books so I started collecting them. I do already own Spark of the Everflame. So just look how these covers are so pretty. I absolutely love just the concept behind them. Um, I think the third one should be on its way. But we have one and two so far. And then I got another diamond painting. So this one, I know you can't really see it well. But it's like butterflies and flowers. I kind of just buy one like every once in a while. And then I work on them. I started this one during my Pam Controls My Week vlog and I'm almost done with it if you can't tell I'm like working on the top here so I'm finally gonna finish it this week that's what my little Amazon haul was for today stay tuned for probably the next one on Monday because <laughs> your girl got more books I can't stop I have a problem I'm gonna stop talking and get to reading because I would like to submit these points today before Bree submits the next leg. I want my points to count. I want Team Romance to come out on top. I want to see like what our rewards could possibly be. Here we go. And we're flying with this one. Like literally, well, I'm not literally flying, but within the game, I chose the flying option because this is a big chonker. I believe it is double the points for the pages and then adding on 50 points for it being romance. It's probably like 50 fantasy 50 romance that's all the points that i'll get but it's it's still a big one and 
right after I finish that, I am probably going to start Into the Drowning Deep by Mira Grant. It's another big one, but I'm not going to count it for a city prompt, I don't think. I'm going to count this for a sightseeing prompt, but I am buddy reading this with my bestie Brie. She's on Team Spooky. I'm going to be reading this. Hopefully, I'm going to get my underwater horror fix. I'm going to be reading this with her, and um, I think she'll get like some extra points for it for her team. Like I think it's her team genre, LGBTQ author, and a host favorite. I think Brie for Paws, uh, this is one of her host favorites. So Bestie Brie is gonna be getting a lot of points for this. Me, not so much. Well, I mean, I could. I'll figure it out. I don't know what sightseeing prompt it would go for yet. Let's get reading. It is, you know, a full day of reading today. Reading when the moon hatched. I'm trucking along. How far am I? I am about 70. 70% of the way through. I shall finish this tonight, but I did finish my diamond painting. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take what's left in my little containers, dump them into this jar, and then I will pick out my next diamond painting, and then I'll just kit up. That way I can work on that a little bit for the rest of the evening, and um, I'll show you what I picked. I have decided to go with this one next. So it's just a very bright, flowers and butterflies kind of thing your hair looks longer than last june there's so much i've been down to know about you but we've been distant is it too soon to call pretending it's to ask you what's new and i hope we haven't lost our way cause it feels that way to me but i know that when i see you oh i never wanna be so don't be so mad i know that it's easier said than done but it feels like it's hopeless Hey guys, it is Sunday, June 9th. You're going to see the end of this vlog here, and then I'll probably be wearing the same outfit for the beginning of the second week vlog. So I do want to kind of just go over my ratings and things like that for the books that I've read so far. And before I do that, I am on my friend's sprints right now. So my friend Katie is currently sprinting. And if you could please, 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 please go subscribe to her channel. This is I Would Rather Be Reading. She is very close to 900 subscribers and she works so, so hard. She's just the best. I'm gonna talk about my ratings. First, I'm gonna go over the city prompts and then I'll do the sightseeing prompts that I've completed so far. So to start off this readathon, I did put a little poll up about should I start Love Redesigned or should I start a love song for Ricky Wild? And you guys had voted Love Redesigned or my people on Instagram did. And I really, really love this book. I started out with a freaking five star this month. This was a freaking banger. I just ate it up. The quotes are so cute. Lauren Asher has uh, kind of been like, I don't know, hasn't been hitting for me with her other series. This one, I really liked. Definitely um, happy that I got sent this free copy from Bloom and I ended up giving it five stars. So check this one out if you haven't tried it already. The second prompt was a book with a dual POV and everybody was raving about role playing. So I picked this one up. This is by Kathy Yardley. This has really good demisexuality rep, kind of just talks about it and like how people don't necessarily experience things the same way. Maybe someone who has just like attraction towards people like with I think demisexuals have to build like a bond with people in order to feel that attraction towards them and that desire, if I'm not mistaken. But it was a really good like insight into it. I mean, I overall liked the book. I gave it three and a half stars. I really did like how there was older people represented, not like old, old, but like, so the main female character is 48 and the main male character is 50. So like, I feel like I don't see that in a lot of my contemporary romances. And this was like a nerdy one too. So like, they're obviously playing a video game together and I love video games. So this was kind of like a really cute romance, I would say. So I, I would recommend this one as well. And it did give me extra points for being a host favorite as well. And then for the third prompt, it was a book with movement in the title, Sarah A. Parker's when the moon hatched so this one was just really really good i gave this one four and a half stars i'm excited to see where the story goes next because i believe it is going to be 
uh, series. But yeah, I really, really liked this one. I didn't know I was gonna like it so much, but I'm very happy that before I even read this, I actually, um, a couple days ago, the Fairy Loot edition of this came out and I bought it. So I'm very excited that I'm gonna have not only this pretty copy, but the Fairy Loot pretty copy. Very excited overall to, to just like read this again when the series continues on. As for sightseeing books, um, I did return this one to the library already, so it's called If You'll Have Me by Uni. So this was an LGBTQ author, team genre, and I did the prompt a BIPOC author or a person of color author. This ended up getting me 400 total points. I rated this one four stars. I really enjoyed it. It felt like a new adult heart stoppers put sapphic. So that's kind of like the tagline I would use for it. And within the 400 point category, I also read a book involving a game. So I read Cat and Gamer. It's a cute little graphic novel and I do plan on continuing the series because there's a couple more. So for this one, I just got flat out 400 points. There's nothing extra, any extra bonus points towards it. For Cat and Gamer, I also gave that a four star. I thought it was super cute. Um, I really loved it. Not one of my favorites ever, but definitely a fun, easy read. Last night, so I didn't vlog about this because I was, it was really late. I was up until maybe like 2 in the morning. But last night, I happened to read a book. I'm not very proud of it because it wasn't a very good book. But I was hoping that there would be some stuff in it that would like be really spicy. And I unfortunately only gave it a 1.75 star. I read... Eager Housewife by Evie Rose or a book with one person on the cover. It had the term free use in it and I was like, oh, this could be a fun spicy time. Anyway, so I got um, team genre points for that and I used it for that 400 point prompt. So it was 450 points. But yeah, I only gave that book a 1.75 because I finished it and it was not the best. Like the writing was terrible to me, in my opinion. Sorry. If you want my full review, it's on Goodreads and Storygraph. So those are linked below. Last night... And this morning I read Sugarcane. I read like a little bit, like probably read like half of it last night and then I finally got sleepy. So I was reading Sugarcane. I actually had started over, um, ended up just purchasing the audio to support the author because I think, I was like, oh, I, I think I would end up liking this. And I did. So this is Sugarcane by Cassandra Celia. Um, that's how the audio has pronounced her name. This is like a horror novella. So don't go into this thinking it's gonna be a dark romance because no romance involved. For the prompt, a book with all five vowels on the cover, I did use that. So we have A, E, I, O is up here somewhere, and then U. So all the five vowels are on the front cover. But yeah, I think I would give this like a four and a half stars. It is very short. I would have really loved if we got more of the fear factor from her perspective versus like these past retellings of her life and what led up to now but it would have been really cool to hear like more of her inner dialogue but overall this was this was a really good horror book that like hit so that's 500 points don't think i vlogged this uh because i read it so quickly i just forgot about it but i read evocation by st gibson this one i used for a book with foiling on the cover and this was also one of my net galley arcs so i did read this one uh i think the first day of the readathon because i had a lot of time on saturday and this one's also by an lgbtq author and the team genre is romance um it's like half romance and half fantasy paranormal but yeah i feel like it was a really good 50 50 split i would say i felt like there was more romance well it's not a romance book per se but the relationships among the people definitely there was romance so that's why i counted it this one got me 600 points and then the last book that i read for this week is faded by sarah reddy this is another net galley arc that i had for a book with less than a thousand ratings on goodreads and so at the time that i read this it only has 71 ratings and 61 reviews currently and it doesn't come out till July 16th so that kind of makes some sense but this one got me 550 points so in total I racked up along with the detours because I did all three detours this week that was 200 points each so the city prompts and the detours got me 3830 points and then the sightseeing points I have a total of 2400 so that brings me to a grand total of 6230 points for the first week of the amazing readathon um this was just the first nine days so it's a little bit more than a week just because I wanted my vlog to come out on Sunday this week and then next week it should be maybe a little bit lower I'm trying to figure 
figure out the most like strategic plan going forwards. This week I do have some travel plans coming up so I'm going to be going to Seattle so you'll see a little bit more of my Seattle adventures in the week two vlog but I probably won't be able to read as much next weekend and that's what I've been relying on in terms of getting like big books read over the weekend and so I probably won't also be able to participate in the face-off weekend which really sucks but it's a-okay. I will do my best. I do have some reading I can do on the plane ride to and back so that should still help out. I'm hoping to get a lot of maybe quick novellas in or something like that but we'll see. But thanks guys for watching this week's video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe and I hope that you stick around for next week's vlog. If you have gotten to the end of this video and you have nothing else to say, put an emoji for whichever team that you are on for the amazing readathon if you're participating and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye!